Okay. Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Gerardo. I'm the head teacher in um, Ebony and I'm here today with Paul, you know, Hello. One of our greatest guitarists. <laughs> <laughs> um, Paul, why do you think it's very important to learn music at a young stage? Well, it, um, learning music changed everything for me. I mean, I think that the, the amazing thing about learning music is it's more than just learning how to play, how to play a tune. It's learning about how, how to play a melody. It's, there's so many kind of transferable skills. And I think the best thing for young people is confidence. So I was like an extremely shy kid when I was at school. And it wasn't until I started learning music that I kind of really came out of my shell because it gave me a way to express myself, a way to be creative. In, in, and I hadn't found any sort of means to do that before. Okay. There wasn't anything, any sort of activities that I had which worked for that. And I see that in a lot of the students that I'm learning. It gives them, it gives them something which allows them to you know, come out of their shells, their shells as well. And that was a hugely important thing for me. And I wouldn't be where I am now in my life if it wasn't for that. How do you think it's good to start a music lesson with the students? It's a, you know, the very beginning one, the very young one. I always say to all my students that the most important thing is you start out doing little and often. So it's very easy. You see all these kind of interviews of kind of musicians and they will talk about how they played 17 hours a, um, a day. And it's, it's sounding absolutely it's ridiculous. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> it's very, very intimidating. So I like to tell people that the most important thing is little but often. So what I say to especially younger students, I say five minutes a day, every day. Because that way it's, it's like exercising, right? It's, your, it's not just about you playing it's about you get your fingers getting used to it it's okay. not just about memory but just your fingers knowing where to play, where to move around on an instrument and the more you do it over a long period of time the more you do that in the same way that if i'm just lifting this up i'm not thinking to myself arm goes up arm goes up i do it because i've been lifting things so up you all build my life. Up a sort of routine of course becomes... absolutely okay so i always say that's the most important thing so just get into the groove of things and then as they do it more and they realize that it makes a difference and how by doing that, it helps. they become more keen. Exactly. They start to do more and they start to do more. And it's no longer, oh, I need to do my five minutes today. It's, oh, five minutes are over, but I want to do more. And that's, the, that's when you got it. How do you start your lesson? What is the procedure? What do you normally start? In my, Techniques, in, skills, songs? In, my, in the first ever lesson of a student? Yeah, the first ever lesson, all the other ones. You know. So I always just uh, do an introduction to the very, very basics of, of the instrument. You know, usually in my case, it's guitar. The context i like to get them started with the same tune well, I which you are i know you this as well because you, yes you know, yes I, I think it's can be <laughs> electric lead. guitar acoustic yeah. guitar um classical guitar bass guitar mandolin banjo many more but the thing that i usually start with especially my um, guitar students is i get them started with the same tune which was the first thing i ever learned on guitar something really simple possible it's about four notes that you just go between it's a great way of just learning the very basics of the notes and it's something that everyone knows so you know they can, uh, can go home to their parents and say hey look what i learned and they'll know they'll know the song okay so you know the ear as well you absolutely know what the song sounds like and you give them the first notions the first you definitely know, positions and also ear uh learn, understanding ear training is one of the most important things uh, for me because I always, well, one thing I always say, you know, learning to read music is so important as well. But what I always say to students is, what do we do with music? And sometimes they get a bit, what do you mean, what do you do? And I say, well, we listen to it. <laughs> we listen to it. And so never underestimate the year. And I'll say... Do you think they listen enough to music every day? Um, or they should listen to music more? I think they could listen to music more actively. Because it's always, it's always around. You know, it'll always be, if you're watching a video on YouTube, there'll be background music. There might be music on in the, in the car or anything. But maybe it would, yeah, to, to actually go and actively seek out music. One thing I think that's amazing today in the current day and age, sometimes, you know, a lot of people are very, very critical about how things are it's, uh, with like the current generation and their listening habits. But one thing I think is amazing is there seems to be like the barriers of time have okay. sort of broken a little bit, especially the way that people are li- li- discovering music is the Hear a Cool song on TV. So, uh, mm-hmm. for example, uh, at low, last summer, I had lots of students wanting to learn Kate Bush uh, okay. running up that hill. And that's because okay. that the show Stranger Things yeah. had it. Yeah. And it's, it's so funny because, or oh, the other one was uh, Metallica, <laughs> Master okay. of Puppets, a song that came out uh, over 30 years ago. And it was so funny here, having all these students who are, you know, year, like year seven and year eight, come to me and say, I want to learn this song by Metallica. Well, and it just shows... Uh, what is the most required song for Metallica? I'll give you three options. Matthew Girl's Mother, and the Sandman, Master of Puppets. 
Master of Puppets, but it's the hardest one. So sometimes <laughs> I say, hey, maybe we should do Enter Sandman. So in the sequence of three, which one you put? But Master of Puppets' first one is difficult because it has a really Enter, really enter really Sandman like. probably is the, probably okay. the easiest one because it's, you know, it's a nice kind of rock riff, some interesting techniques with nothing else matters because you have, it, it's almost like in its own way, a bit of classical guitar. So that's a bit more complicated, unless, of course, okay. they've been doing classical guitar. I like with my classical students to show them that as well as learning how to play classical music, that they can also apply that skills to things that they learn. And likewise, okay. with the with students who are really into modern music, I like to you know, engage in some classical repertoire of them as well, so they can see that where the roots of what they're doing and you know the fundamentals and where that's come from. There is a very nice uh, <laughs> quote that I want to tell you. You need to say, to stop a pianist, playing the music, you take off his book. <laughs> <laughs> to stop a guitar player to make some music, you put in front of him a book. <laughs> what you yes. Think of? <laughs> yes. And for me, I is think this a more free instrument? It's something that you can, because, you know, the, the, the vibrato, the bendings, the sliding notes and things, that makes this instrument very, very personal, you know. You know, yes, you know, in each in each guitar plays the thing. Yes, definitely. But I do also always um, talk to my students about attention to detail and okay. like reading reading things very closely. And one thing that I uh, I really believe in with with my students, if I if I know that they can do something, I will try not to just go, oh yeah, it's here. I'll go. So let's say that they're reading something and they're missing a note. I won't say, oh, it's that. I'll say, let's look at that bar again. What is it? And nine times out of ten, when they actually look closely and they concentrate, they go, "Oh, I missed, I missed that note right there. Oh, I missed that. Uh, yeah, I should, I should play that next time." And then because they've done that, because they've done it themselves, they never forget. So I really, in, in situations like that, I really like to guide students to learn how to, how to do something themselves. Because okay. I always say that the best thing for me, for one of my students, is for them not to need not to need me to learn something. Interesting. So if they can actually go and say and try to learn something online and I was like, oh, Paul told me about how to do this. Oh, I've got it already. Then for me, that's a, that's a big win. Okay, well, interesting. And that was the same thing that I learned from my, from my teachers. So I got lessons from Keith West who taught guitar here. Yeah. And <laughs> he, he was, name. yeah, and he was, yeah, incre incredible. And he really taught me about being sort of self-sufficient. And we did take, many tracks together, you know. Oh, oh, amazing! Me and him, we worked so much. Yeah. Well, he was, he, he, was he, he taught me about recording music for the first time, about composing. That was all. That was all thanks to him. And it's 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 funny because I teach in a few schools in the area as well. And so I, once in a while, I, for, uh, until you know, until while he was still in the UK, uh, once in a while I have some students who would show up at some of my schools and they'd be playing really, really well. And I'd be like, oh, you're doing you're doing really good. Uh, do you get lessons outside school as well? I was like, yeah. And they'll go, oh, where? And I was like, oh, it's a get from a teacher called Keith. I'd have that, that happened like two or three times and every time I was like, oh, of course. <laughs> so how important is the passion of the teacher? Well, put it this way, um, for me, I always think that I want to be for my students what Keith was for me. Okay, that's, that's, that's a fantastic. huge part of it. Um, you have me. a lot of respect for him. Don't oh, you? absolutely. Yeah, he, he, he was an absolute, and it wasn't just Keith I got lessons from here. I also got Serge who taught um, guitar. This was, this was back in 2004. Yeah. Both of them were, um, if you pardon the pun, instrumental in yeah, um, yeah. changing yeah. How, uh, how, I viewed, how I viewed music. And how have you learning also an then instrument? Here, you know, you know, you Absolutely, know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, this is the great thing. That <laughs> to make sense, then how long this business has been around? Really, you know? it really Talking is about forty years plus. You know exactly, and uh, you know that it's a local kind of yes. place as well. It's, it's a community, isn't it? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Because you might have you know shops in places like Denmark Street and things like that, but having somewhere in the local area is so is so important. True, yeah. Somewhere with a sense of uh, sense of community. I always find that it's with local places. It's it's a lot. There's, it's a bit friendlier just because it's a little. You know, there's that that absolute hustle and bustle of being in somewhere like Soho. You can't yeah. really develop a rapport with people. Yeah. We have people who come here, get lessons here. It's more personal touch, I think. Exactly. It's more intimate. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we get to we get gigs to know. wise. What are you doing at the moment? At the moment, so it's been a little bit quiet. It's been a little bit quiet lately. You're a rocker, no? You're yes. A... Yeah. I'm uh, very very heavily involved <laughs> in the heavy metal. <laughs> I've got. Uh, I haven't got any for a while. I've got one next year, which is in uh, Molins de Rey, which is right. a suburb in Barcelona, in Spain. Um, it's a local festival uh, run by uh, run by a great team, a team called uh, Metal Defenders. Where it's a great like grassroots um, scene. And uh, as well, but besides that, I was um, I was supposed to be doing. I was supposed to be doing one this Sunday, but unfortunately, um, my drummer's had an injury. <laughs> so 
so yeah, you told me that so, oh my god yeah so no can yeah. do but the, um, that's that, that's another thing i like to explain to my students that um and what's the great thing about being here is that we have so uh, so many students teachers like, like yourself yeah. who are professional musicians who have actually gone out and performed and i that's you know one thing that i tr i try to apply that um, again going back to when i was less, getting lessons with keith one thing that really astounded me was he told me how he used to get guitar lessons he used to he used to go on, he went on a tour in australia uh, and toured with a guitar player by the name of joe satriani so uh, if, for those of you who are unfamiliar with joe satriani, <laughs> for yes for those of us who are for like our uh, guitar aficionados that is a uh that is that is a real sign of, uh, a real <laughs> of accomplishment view. to be able to share a stage with, some, yeah. with someone as incredibly talented as that. Oh, wow. And that was something for me. I was like, wow, okay. So I know I'm learning from someone who is actually a professional, someone who's actually does uh, music. And I tried to kind of apply the same things which I um, which I learned from traveling, from making music and practical application of music, not just on a textbook. When I'm teaching students, I've had students who have since gone and started bands, started um, you know working on working on like releasing music, making making records and uh, things like that. And so I and it's a and it's a very interesting kind of world because it, it's a lot more than play fret two, play fret five. There's a sense of business acumen that comes into that, a technical know how, and that is something that for my students who are really into that, I like to share that too because the process then and music, start do what you have to do carry absolutely. on bands albums go around and play yes jam, jam sessions whatever in a way that works Just for play. everyone yeah. as well because that's it, it's what you can choose to you know join join bands and form or you know learn some chords learn to strum them and do a bit of busking yeah. all are great and all are fantastic and are really important for like i said building people's confidence as performers and being able to get in touch with music and seeing the positive influence that it has on people's lives and that's you know, that, that for me is absolutely priceless and I've seen it in so many of my students and it's always and it's always great to see and well as, as we as we know we all want more we as know. well <laughs> yeah. so guys thank you very much for watching this is Paul I'm Gerard and I uh, hope to see you soon all in Ebony and Ivory in Colinda yes thank you thank you all good oh it's fantastic brilliant